Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to learn how to add complex soundscapes into our environment by using ambient sounds. We're going to play around with some sound areas as well as some sound events in code, as well as demonstrate to you how to use values in sequences. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the ambient sounds manager. It's going to ask you to create this ambience manager. So just click that. What it does is it adds a script to our fly camera, or in this case, whichever camera that you have uh, in the hierarchy. So I've got this, there's the ambient manager. Um, now inside of the ambient sound manager, it'll show you all the sequences that we have in our game. It'll also show you the modifiers that we have in our game as well. But let's first look at sequences. So sequences, if you open them up, sequences are the objects that contain a bunch of clips as well as a bunch of rules and a bunch of combinations that we can use in order to modify our playback. Speaking of which, we can add modifiers to our sequence and what that does is it modifies specific parameters depending on which requirements have been met. Moving right along, I wanna see if I can add some wind sounds as well as some birds chirping, like random birds chirping. Uh, throughout our level and the way I'm going to do that is by going to the fly camera where the script is attached the ambience manager I'm going to choose new global sequence and then I'm going to select the individual sequences that I want uh, In this case, it's going to be wind and I'm going to add another global sequence, which is going to be random birds one this first one You can mix and match stuff. You can play around with it yourself, but let's just see what this sounds like so far, you can hear the birds chirping. And the sound that I want to play is this one, BMG, BGM Town. If you go to the monitor, during gameplay, the monitor will let you change individual parts or modify the individual parts to mute and unmute the, the sequences that are currently playing, as well as tell you what volume levels they're at. So we've got random birds, I've muted the wrong one. That's the sound that I want for the town. So in order to get this fired off properly, I'm gonna go to my hierarchy. I'm gonna create an empty game object called sound, uh, uh, audio areas. And inside of that, whoops, I'll make sure it's at zero. Inside of that, I'm going to create a audio area which I'm going to call town and it needs to have a sequence tied to it so I'm going to tie a sequence which is called BGM town there we go so what the audio area looks like it's actually located in the center of the world at the moment which is over there I'm going to press control shift in order for me to snap it to the terrain so I can just bring it over here there we go so it's in the middle of the of the town at the moment and it's really small. So I wanna make it bigger. I'm not gonna adjust the scale. Uh, I'm gonna, actually gonna adjust the area size. There is, um, there is a difference. The difference is that when you modify the town scale, it will actually, it, it will change the scale, sure, but now this is inaccurate. So if I set it to two, it's gonna be two times whatever the scale was. So I wanna make sure I stay within units just so that I can work with it a bit better in code. So I'll select town. I'm gonna to set this to be 50 by 50, maybe a bit bigger. I'll set that to be 100 and just 100. Yeah, that's good. And then I'll, I'll also set up a fall off to be 50 by 50 by 50. So what this does is when you play your audio, or well, when your camera enters this little zone, this uh, box, it's gonna start to play the audio. And then the closer and closer I get to the green box, the louder it's gonna get. And then when I enter the green box, it's gonna be at full volume. So that's what the fall off does. Let me just show you what it actually does in the game. So my camera at the moment is located over there. I'm gonna have the game view and the scene view side by side so that you can see what's happening. So let me just hit play. So now that I'm in play mode, I'm gonna go and select the camera as well as the town so we can see what it looks like so there's the camera at the moment if I turn around and start to go inside of it you notice it's quite it's it's quite low 
but then as soon as I get closer and closer to the center, it'll get to full volume. Great. And I can demonstrate this in the monitor if I open up the... There's the monitor. The town is really low at the moment. But if I get closer and closer and closer, you can see how it increases in volume and eventually it gets to full volume. Beautiful. So that's what a sound area does. Now, one thing I do want to change about this is the town itself probably doesn't require it to be a box. And you don't necessarily have to just do boxes, which is really cool. You can actually set it to be uh, 2D and 1D. I'll show you 1D a bit later, but let's go to 2D. So 2D is good for this specific case because I don't want the, the player, if the player is flying over the environment, I don't want the, the audio to, um, to not chime in, especially since it's a box. So at the moment, it's going to just chime in no matter what your Y is. So if my Y value is really, really high or really, really low, it'll still play the audio on a 2D spectrum. Let's see if I can test this. So I'll get closer to the town. And I'll also go to my scene view. And highlight it so you can see. So it doesn't really matter where I stand, where I go, if I'm up high or low, it will still play the audio at full volume. So that's a really good use case. Another really good use case is if we go over to the water, I want to see if I can make some uh, some water sounds. So there is a water sound that comes with ambient sounds, which is uh, if I go to window and open up the ambient sounds manager, we can go to sequences. And I'll see if I can play one of the sounds. Here we go, there's water. So that's the sound I want to play if I get really, really close to the water. And the way I'm going to set that up is by going to the water and adding an audio area. I'm going to call it water and I'll put it inside of audio areas just to keep it all together. And I'll, I'll add a sequence to it, which is going to be the water sequence, which is over here. There we go. There's a water sequence. Um, the water, the water itself, there it is. The um, game object itself is a cube to, by default. I'm going to change it to be a new one, which is 1D. And what this does is it makes it so that the sound is going to be on a plane, uh, meaning that this, the volume is going to adjust on a plane. So if I get closer and closer and closer to this level of the, of the world, this height of the world, it's going to play the audio. You can also apply a fall off, which is really, really cool. I can set it to be 30. 30 is a good number for this. Uh, and also, the height is not exactly in line with the water, so I do know that the water is at 50, so I'm just going to place it there. There we go. Unfortunately, Control shift only works for, for terrains, and that's a Unity thing. So if I just go like that, beautiful. So that just means that the closer and closer I get to the water, the louder it's going to be. Okay, let's try and do this. I'm going to select the camera, and I'll select the water. We can see both. I'm going to leave the plane there. And let's see if we can go fly over to it. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are. I'm just going to fly over here so I can demonstrate the height. So if I get closer and closer to the water, I start to slowly hear the water get louder and louder and louder. That's 1D. Okay, so there's another sound I want to add to this environment, which is near the mountains. The reason is because I've got actually two sets of AIs. I've got AIs that go this way. Let me just show you my environment. So I've got two separate AI paths that get followed. I've got mountain A, which is this part over here. The other one. 
No, nope, I've got Mountain A, which is over here. And Mountain A, they have a little bit of a path I've set up, which goes around this area. And then I've also got Mountain B, which has a bit of paths I've set out to go back and forth. And they just the agents just patrol. They just go back and forth. I want to add like a rubble sound so that it feels like the the um, the rock monsters are making thuds as they walk. So ambient sounds actually comes with one like this. And I'm going to go to the sound manager. And if I go to sequences, you'll notice I've got spooky wavering. This is the sound I want to play when I get really, really close to the mountain areas. Because along with the thuds, you can also hear the wavering. So the way I'm going to set that up is I'm going to go to audio areas. Uh, I've called to, I've got, I've got mountain A wavering. And then I've also got Mountain B wavering, which um, at the moment, Mountain A, if you remember, is over here. So that's Mountain A. And Mountain B is all the way over here. You'll also notice in my environment, I'm using Sector, uh, which is also another procedural world uh, asset that allows me to sectorize my terrain. And I've, I've uh, exported the terrains on this side so that I can save in performance. Uh, but in, at the moment, I'm looking in one of the sectors. I'm just working in one of them. So if I set this to be maybe 400, nope, not 400. I'll set that to be 200 by 400. Yeah, and then uh, maybe set it back to 2D. Yep, 200 by 400. I love how it maintained my, my text. That's really awesome. A lot of tools don't do that. There we go. So I've got the area and I'm actually gonna add a fall off maybe, probably like 50. No, no, it's going to be slowly, gradually, so maybe just 10 by 10. It's very, very small. You won't notice it too much. Okay, there's Mountain B. Now I'm going to do Mountain A. I don't know why I did it backwards, but anyway. Okay, so if I place it right there, I'm going to set this to be 400. Ooh, maybe a bit more, actually. I'll set it to be 500. Just because I'm going to move it across a little bit, I'll put it there. And then uh, I'm gonna set the 200 that way. Again, 10 by 10 and set it to 2D. I forgot to set it to 2D. So there we go. We've got 2D, X 200, Y 500, fall off 10 on 10 by 10. Now to set up the actual audio, I'm gonna give it the same sequence. So I might select both. The sequence is called spooky wavering. So I'll put that in there and let's give that a test. Okay, so if I go away from this area, it goes away, but if I get close, awesome, you start to hear the wavering when they're nearby, that's, in, that's that side, and let me go to the other mountain, mountain B, there's a town, and then... Not happy with that. I might actually increase the size of it because the size is a bit too low. There we go. All right, so I'll increase the size on the X to be 300 instead. And that'll do it. Awesome, so that should give it a go. I'll give it one more test just before we continue. So if I find my camera over there, Yeah, that's a good timing. I'm happy with that. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go to the events tab. What I wanna do is I wanna set up the individual rock monsters to fire off a combat sequence whenever you enter the a, a zone around it. That way I can later fire off animations to uh, make it so that the enemy will chase after you and attack you. Uh, but at the moment, um, we've already got a combat one set up. If you wanna set up your own, you have to click and drag the sequence that you want into here and then set up the event name yourself. So yeah, the event that we have is called combat and we need to fire it off via code. Um, Ambient Sounds already comes with a script in a demo um, at the moment that fires off those things. So if I show you what the script looks like, the script has uh, it, it takes in an event name. Uh, when the trigger is entered, 
when the object enters the trigger, it's going to check if the tag is 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 tagged if the object is tagged player. If it is, it's going to tell Ambient Sounds Manager to uh, activate that that event with that name, and it'll also um, do it. It'll also deactivate the event when we exit, which is awesome. That's what we want. So that when we enter the the collision, it will play it, and when we enter it, uh, when we exit it, it, it will turn off. So let's set this up. The way we're going to do that is by going to the AI. We'll go to the prefab itself. So I'm going to open up the prefab window. I'm going to go and attach a collider to this, which I think it's already got a capture collider. Yeah, it, it does. I'm just going to increase the size, set it to two, increase the height, do something like four, five. Is that not touching the ground? No, I'll do four. Cool. And then uh, I'll make it so that the radius is like the. Ah, that'll do. It could have even been a sphere collider. It doesn't really matter. Okay, cool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that script, which is called modifier trigger. It's instead of the demo of uh, ambient sounds. The event name is called combat. So I'm going to fire off combat when something enters that trigger. So I'll make it a trigger. What's not going to make it fall? Oh, actually, if it's a trigger, it also needs to have a rigid body, which I'll make kinematic because I don't want this to be modified by anything. So the nav mesh, the nav mesh agent is the thing that's moving in along the nav mesh. It won't fall through the terrain, but I've got the capture collider. It's set to is trigger. And then I've also got a rigid body. The reason why I have to set it to kinematic is so it doesn't fall through. And also um, it needs a rigid body so that the trigger event will call inside of uh, modifier trigger. Okay. Now, in order for our camera to collide with the character, we need to set up the tag to be player. We also need to attach a sphere collider and set it to trigger. So that way it gets um, registered by the physics engine. The other thing is in order for this combat system to work, it's got two sequences. These sequences need to be attached to the global sequence. So that way um, our events will be masked or they'll be blocked based on uh, whether or not it's 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 uh, it's fired. So, for example, if we start our game, it's going to be placed in nature background mu background music because of how it's set up. Um, but then, if we if we fire off an event in our game, which is um, going to be combat, it's going to switch over to this one and block the the nature. So it's going to switch o switch over to nature action instead of just nature. So I'm going to demonstrate this. If I hit play. I'll move the sound manager over to here and I'll switch over to, there we go. So in monitor, notice how nature background music is on. Combat is currently being blocked because of the event combat. It's currently set to off. If I go into any one of the enemies, you can see how it's just, it's unblocked it and it's blocked the other one. Awesome, and then when I leave, switches back over to the other one. Okay, the other thing that's really cool is if you go inside of this, you'll notice a little value right there where it says the value time and day and event combat is modifying this current uh, sequence. So this sequence has two events to it. Uh, well, two, two separate um, conditions, I mean. It's got two separate conditions. It's got value and event, which is being, uh, which is at the, um, if you've noticed before over to the, uh, Okay, the requirements, it's got two requirements. Uh, at the moment, it's got um, combat and it's also got another one, which is time of day. And time of day is is what's being modified in, inside of value. So you can actually see um, what time of day is actually doing. It's modifying the volume level depending on the time of day. So in the morning you, or, or well, at the beginning of the game, it's going to be set to zero time of day, which means that you'll hear nature. And then eventually when it reaches the end of the day, it'll it'll um, turn off. So I'll demonstrate that too. If I leave the combat section, nature background music is there. So I'm gonna go to monitor and I'll change this to 0.75, which is right there. Notice how it fades out. So that's how you use values. But to create your own value, you can actually do the same thing we did with events by clicking and dragging your sequence into here and it will create 
a new value and you just give it a name. So there you have it. That's how you create very complex soundscapes really easily by using ambient sounds. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.